Hi, welcome everyone. So welcome to this sixth uh, session of our Focus uh, Talk series. Uh, so I'm very glad uh, to welcome um, Sarah Sadik, uh, artist uh, from Marseille, um, talking together with Céline Kopp, who is uh, director of um, Triangle in Marseille. Uh, so I'm Adeline Blanchard, responsible for visual arts at Institut Français. Uh, and so this talk is taking place uh, within our talk series uh, in our focus program. Uh, focus, as I say every, every time, uh, is um, a program by Institut Francais inviting curators and uh, institutions, directors from all over the world to come to France and to discover the French art scene. And this time, due to COVID, uh, uh, to the COVID situation, we uh, decided to do a series of talks online. So, Sarah, I will start first with you. I mean, I will um, introduce you. Uh, so, you graduated uh, from Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Bordeaux in 2018, so very recently. Um, your work has been presented in various uh, group exhibitions uh, in Zurich, um, in New York at the University of Columbia, uh, at the Gallery Edouard Manet in Gennevilliers, uh, in Galerie Crève-Cœur in Paris. Uh, you also have presented performances at Palais de Tokyo in the festival um, Du Disturb, um, and also at the festival Parallèle at Friche Belle de Mai. Um, you presented also works uh, in Rotterdam and in Mono and at Schinkel Pavillon uh, in Berlin. Um, so you, you draw um, inspirations from um, what you call Beurre Corps, uh, the French working class youth culture for the Maghrebi diaspora. Uh, so your work is a mix of video, uh, performance, uh, installation, and photography, uh, questioning Beurre Corps. Uh, representation uh, through references linked to music, uh, language, uh, fashion, um, as well as social networks and science fiction. Um, you explore and document um, it, uh, social and aesthetic symbols um, in fictive narratives uh, in which you often feature. Um, so it's based on semiological, sociological analysis of the burnness, and you play with social cliches, uh, with uh, social mythologies, uh, deconstructing them and re-injecting them into anticipation narratives. Um, so you are also, so you are presented right now uh, at Friche Belle de Mai in Marseille, um, but you are also part of Manifesta 13. Um, and so we will start this conversation today uh, with Céline Kopp, um, Director of Triangle. And uh, Céline, I pass you on the word and I would like to ask you to, to present uh, briefly Triangle. Hi, thank you so much, Adeline, for the invitation and uh, to the French Institute. Um, well, hi, everybody, and thank you for being here with us. Um, yes, I'm going to, um, to introduce a little bit Triangle, which is a very, very um, particular model, um, which made me come to Marseille, actually. <laughs> I came for that, uh, and it's been now eight years. Um, Triangle is uh, what you would call um, a Kunstalo model. Uh, so it's a non-profit, um, a non-collecting non-profit. And um, it has the specificity to be, um, uh, it has a DNA of an artist run space. Uh, triangle, maybe you know the network. Do you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Because uh, I'm in a hotel room in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, what was I saying? Yes, the, the, you, you might have heard of the network. So the Triangle um, initiative was um, started in the 80s in uh, upstate New York by an artist and a collector, Robert Loder and um, Anthony Caro, with the idea that artists uh, learn from each other. So that is really like at the core of what we do still now. 
um, maybe to fast forward a little bit, um, all of the partner, um, tri the triangle partner are not linked by, um, let, let's say like a mother organization. We're all very much independent. And what's very interesting to me is that we, um, let's say, how can I put this? We are um, grassroots organizations that are all of them born from a need um, in a specific context that ends up like sharing a kind of like ethical ground with the network, which is artists le learn from each other, which is transnational contact, and also like the artist at the heart of the organization. So in Marseille, I'm gonna show a few images. Um, that one. Uh, let's see. Um, what do I do to share again? I forgot. Uh, below the, the green button, share screen. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on it. Okay. Great. Um, so does it work now? Yes, very well. Okay. So that's our founder. He's, a, he's an artist. He's an English um, painter. His name is Alan William. What you see behind is what Adeline called Friche la Belle de Mai. Because she said earlier that um, like Sarah was showing a piece in La Friche La Belle de Mai. Well, La Friche La Belle de Mai is where we're at as a, as a Kunsthalle. And La Friche um, was a former tobacco factory. It, it's at the very heart of Marseille, right next to the train station. And um, like in, in, at the beginning of the 90s, the city um, gave it to artists. So we, um, with others, uh, created the um, activity, um, like the Kunsthalle activity. And if you compare it to other art center in France, like our particularity is that we have um, studios. So we accompany artists all year long through residencies, like artists coming from, from elsewhere. Um, and, uh, and also, um, so that, that is how it looks like today. So it's changed a lot. And this is the network. So it looks very um, uh, scary right now, but <laughs> it's not colonial anyway. Um, I'm just gonna put like a few images very fast. I'm not gonna comment them. It's just for you to, uh, to like get a sort of a sense of like energy of what we do. So we do exhibitions in the gallery that we created in 97 and we also still do um, residencies. So the residency, like I said, we welcome people from elsewhere. That's our studio spaces. Like the studios are about like 750 meter, square meters, uh, really dedicated to um, experimentation, production. And we also don't necessarily do, the exhibitions aren't necessarily linked to the um, residency program. We do help um, artists to get a network like in France to get their towards their first big solo show. Um, and we also produce work, we help fundraise, and then sometimes works that we produce after being shown elsewhere end up in our exhibitions. Um, now we're gonna uh, talk with Sarah because, because this is why we're here. Um, Sarah as an, uh, is an artist we've been working with since, when was it Sarah? 2018. Yeah, we met, we met, it's quite a great story actually, we, we met like um, through an exhibition project that was organized with uh, an artist, Benjamin Valenza, here she is. Um, she was a student at the time. And so she came uh, to work with us like through that kind of program and, and then decided to move to Marseille and to apply to our residency program. Um, so she did like the normal residency, the open call one. And then after that, since she had moved to Marseille, she applied for the city studio. Because what I haven't said, is that uh, we, um, we also accompany curatorially and professionally speaking uh, 14 artists um, who have been selected by, um, by an independent jury of professional um, to be allocated studio spaces in the city of Marseille. So basically we've been working with Sarah for years now and it's quite a big year. Um, Okay, so now maybe I'm gonna show the exhibition where I have on right now, so that you see her work. There you go. 
So this is what we have on right now. We, like I said, we accompany artists um, who work in the municipal studio, 14 of them, and for Manifesta, it was very obvious to us that we wanted to show um, how amazing the local art scene is actually. And we um, did an exhibition that is called Sur Pierre Brulante, where two curators, myself and Marie de Goljac, uh, with the starting point of like wanting to show all of these artists to have nothing to do with each other in terms of practice. So the, 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 the base concept was to say they're a community and they share a common space that is this incredible city that um, we're in contact with, that we breathe, we breathe the tourism, it's the difficulties, it's incredible energy and let's talk about that shared space through, through their works. And this is um, to finish there, the installation that Sarah has on right now in our exhibition. So that's that's where I'm transitioning. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, it's um, it's a piece, it's a video piece and an installation, as you can see, that um, Sarah did um, following a workshop with um, teenagers from. Um, from a neighborhood that is um, in the north part of the city, that is, um, we could say in English, like uh, what, what you call a project um, in terms of urban development. So with a lot of people uh, coming from the different diasporas. Um, and I guess, Sarah, I'm going to let you uh, speak about that. Maybe you can also like speak about your um, where you come from, uh, what happened to you like before coming to Marseille, like your um, background in general. Thank okay. you, Céline. Just before one word, uh, could you unshare your screen so that uh, yes. Saha can share uh, pictures with us? Yes. <laughs> okay. But Great. Yeah. Hello, Thanks. everyone. Uh, so I'm going to do like a micro uh, introduction so as uh, Adeline said, said I'm from Bordeaux and I went to the fine arts school and I graduated from there and then uh, after my graduation I went to Marseille so as you would see after my work is really like uh, based on Marseille and Marseille uh, people but it's pretty universal also so you would see uh, so I'm going to share my, sc my screen. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you see everything? Okay. Yeah, perfect. perfect. So yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, La Crise au Tchèque. So this is the name of the video that is being shown right now at uh, Triangle Asteroid. Uh, for the Sophia Bonot exhibition. And so, as Céline said, it was a, a short film that I made during a workshop uh, with a group of eight teenagers from um, La Busserie neighborhood. So, this is it. you already see it. <laughs> and this is another inter installation picture from um, Dada Marrakech. So, this is La Busserie. I wanted to show you what it is so you can like figure out and so this is like a housing project and is uh, in northern neighborhood of Marseille and this is a neighborhood um, unfortunately known for uh, delinquents, crime and uh, drug dealing so this is like very poor people that live there and <clears throat> the only coverage that this neighborhood has is uh, this type of subject. So, as I said, drug dealing and crime and other things related to gang. And when I got invited to, to work with uh, teenagers from the social center of, the, of La Busserine, I wanted to reuse, uh, like the first thing was, okay, I want to do like a, a short film, a video, and I want to talk about like, um, an ovni sighting and about like alien, like the big word, word alien, arriving in the neighborhood and them uh, doing like a documentation of this. So what we did was like, we used the, okay, first of all, we did like this. I came with like a uh, form. So the story is like co-writing me and them. And I just had like, okay, this is, we are going to talk about 
uh, OVNI. We are going to talk about alien. Everything is going to happen in your neighborhood, so you have to choose where we, you, you want to shoot. And so I did like this form, and uh, we work all together to, I wanted to say please them, but it's more like, okay, the thing is, is that you are going to tell your own story. So I don't know your story. So for that, I need you to, to give me like uh, elements of where you live, what you're eating, what you're drinking, where do you spend most of your time, where do you play football? Okay, I want to know your neighborhood more. And so we can highlight it and put it like in the, the greatest like uh, image of what it is actually. So, up. Okay, so this is the form. This is stills from the some, from the video. So as you can see, this is like uh, the, the the base is like a TV news. So this is like um, one of the teenager. Every each one of them has his own role in the movie. So at first I was I was really scared because I was like maybe they don't want to to act or maybe they don't want to show show themselves and. Actually, it's like it happened in five minutes. They were like, I want to be an, an alien. I want to be the TV reporter. I want to be a, a witness. I want to be. And so each of each one of them has his own role in the movie. So this piece is really like a collaboration between me and them. It's really like a, a, a collaboration, like what it means. So this is some still. So you can see the, the TV news aesthetic. And then this is when the, the OVNI uh, arrive in the neighborhood. These are the aliens. So what they're wearing is like the jersey from their own on ball um, team from, from the neighborhood. And this is like a, a still from like one of the witness showing the videos. And this is backstage <laughs> uh, of, the, of the film. The thing is that this is a really, really low budget film like a really low budget film. So we shoot with my own camera, which is like a pretty shitty camera and so we we did like this green screen in the uh, social center and i just wanted to 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 show them what we can do with green, green screen because green screen was like a, a, um, a huge um, thing that i used in my video since i wanted to create the environment and um, places that i didn't live in so i wanted to show them what we can do with green screen where it can, um, like, you can go anywhere you want with this. So there's like those two, two sides of shooting. So the green screen in the social center and then their neighborhood. So this, this is like their neighborhood. And they were like, okay, I, I want to shoot um, like at the bottom of my own building. I want to shoot on the soccer field of a neighborhood. I want to shoot and they, they just choose where they want to shoot the, the film. And also they created their own props. So for example, in the story, this is like the alien or mean in the beginning. So they are, they are poisoning them. And so they created this uh, drink, which is inspired by Capri Sun drink. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's like poach. Like it's like, um, I won't say juice, but it's more water and sugar and <laughs> artificial coloring. But this is like um, a drink that a lot of Marseille people drink. And so when you're walking by the street, there's all those pouches like uh, on the floor like this. So they wanted to use th this uh, famous drink in Marseille and make their own. So this is like the Wak Roy and Croy Wak. And also they, they, they choose what the, the, the spaceships uh, look like. So this is like a Nen ball, uh, ball. <laughs> And so yeah, this is some stills. Also, as you will see in the other project, there is like a, a youth thing in my work is that I'm reusing the social media aesthetic and how uh, teenagers use social media. So the beginning of the story is um, there are uh, videos shared on WhatsApp, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Periscope. And this is like uh, paranormal activities showing in the neighborhood. So this is like the, 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 the beginning of the story. And yeah, the thing is that um, there is those things happening in the neighborhood and they are the first one, like uh, I'm trying to explain it, but 
I really wanted to, to, to reverse the role between like the, the media and inhabitants. So the domination thing between media coming in an area and uh, choosing witnesses that, um, that are going to say what the media want them to say and how they are telling a story in their own way. And the thing in, in this movie was really to say, okay, this, there are something happening in your neighborhood and you're the only one that can like tell what is happening. So you are telling your own, your own story. This is like the, 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 the more important thing in this, in this um, short film. And also the, the social media are doing like a major sequence in the short film. I think it's, this is my favorite one because this is a party. So in the film is like the welcoming party for the aliens. And the thing is that um, um, they, they were throwing a party at the, at the end. So the, the workshop uh, lasts like one week. So we did like two days of writing three days of uh, shooting, two days of for the sound, and then it was done. <laughs> and so it was really quick, but I'm really proud of it. And so at the end of the workshop, uh, one of the teenage girls had a birthday party. And this group, uh, they were already like a friend group. This was really, really important at the beginning. It, they were friends all together. Uh, they were a group. They even had a name called Black White because I was like, why white? Because there is no white in your group. And they were, yes, see, um, Bilal is white. Bilal is Algerian. So it was really like uh, interesting how they, they viewed them, uh, contrasting with how, what is white to me. Huge subject. We can <laughs> talk about it for like... Uh, no, but maybe Sarah, we, we, we need to say one thing though, is that like, um, so we're French, you're French and... Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a subject that is like all over the art world and the world like all together right now that is like questions of of, uh, of diversity and, and of like bias um, in like all systems of societies. And in, in France, like the, the, there's a specific system that is like the, since the revolution, that is the idea of like universality. And the thing is like through schools, well, whatever happened is that like we can just state the obvious is that the art world in France is very white. The art schools are very white, the professorship is very white, and um, stories that are being told in, in the neighborhoods that you're showing us right now are we're never part of the art world. I mean, as far as I can speak, as far as my personal situated experience, and um, that's not something that was really like around you in terms even of like critical um, discourse in art school in France. Like, I guess like people didn't show, show you, oh, look at like the, 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 the Chicano art community in LA, like taking on the, 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 the media stereotype and like working on that and like reversing like the image of like gang activity and all that. So it's, this is also why I just want to stress that out. Like, to, to our audience this morning, it's like, it, this is a very um, new work that we're seeing in France also because of the language of it. You're not coming on it through like a sort of outside, fakely elevated point of view. You're using the vocabulary of that use, your vocabulary, and you're showing that even though the other people, like you said, might not understand all of it. So it's, it's, it is in that sense very important when, whenever like I encountered your work like years ago, that was like the striking thing to me is that it was like unapologetic in a very necessary way. So sorry for the little. No, thank you. I don't, out, but I, don't be, I don't want to be the one who say this. Because yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> With all the routine that I have, yeah, I think you, you, you're right. So thank you for saying, saying it. Yeah, the thing is that um, I'm working on my own culture and I'm working on the culture of those teenagers. Uh, I'm working on the, the, yeah, the culture of like the, the young working class. At the beginning, it, it was more focused on the Maghrebi diaspora since I'm from the Maghrebi diaspora. 
from both my parents and and then I enla enlarge it to like only like um, working class community but you will see but the thing is that yeah I'm from this culture this is my culture I'm from uh, I came from a uh, uh, working class uh, from a poor background uh, me being an artist right, right now is really like hazardous I would say um, I don't know how to, how to explain it but uh, yeah this is not, I wasn't meant to be here uh, where I am right now. So in all my work, I have like this, uh, like I'm being authentic with myself. So uh, all the aesthetic, all the languages used, all the, the people in, in it, this, everything is real. So yeah, there's a lot of slang in my work. There's a lot of, uh, I, I, it's a bit of um, document, documentaries but with fiction, yeah, you will see. So I'm going back to this scene because this is like a really important form for me. Uh, so there was this teenage girl that had uh, a birthday. And as I said, uh, the group were called Black White and uh, they were throwing like um, parties for like uh, birthday parties and they were like event uh, planners. So it was really fun. And so they invited me to this uh, party so I came with my camera. <laughs> and uh, so in the film, it's like the alien welcoming party, but this was like a real party that they throw and everything was real. And so I'm really happy that this is in the, in the movie. This is like the, the realest part of the, of, the, of the film. So yeah, uh, I think this is like the last, uh, the last, yeah. Uh, so this project is like from uh, 20, 2019, so one year ago, uh, and it's major, a major project in my work because this, this was the first time that I work and collaborate with uh, teenagers, and it opened me to what my work is uh, right now, so after this project, I was like, okay, this is the thing I want to do in Marseille, because Marseille is like, uh, I, I would say like a lack of uh, thing proposed to them, to this kind of, of to this, those teenagers. So I was like, okay, I make art. I want to make art with them. And not in like a social thing, but more like we're gonna make like uh, art together. And we're gonna be like in exhibition and we're gonna be like in a public collection. And we're gonna be, this is like, a, we're gonna do like a real like art together. So I was like, okay, I want to work with teenagers and the main uh, topic that I wanted to work on was love among teenagers and I wanted to focus on uh, boys. So uh, I started like a, a huge project called um, Hlel Academy. Hlel is an Arabic word. At the beginning it means a religious wedding, so uh, Islamic one. And then in France it's a word that we use for just saying like my husband, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my love, my... So yeah, this is the name of the project called Hlel Academy. It's a four part project. So the fo I, I want to focus on uh, the project I did for Manifesta, but just to introduce <laughs> this one, I'm gonna talk about the, 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 the first part of this huge project uh, called Tu de la Miss. So the translation is, is uh, you pissing me off, girl. Uh, de is a, a word uh, mainly used in Marseille, so this is like a typical, a typical word for Marseille uh, among the, the young, huh? <laughs> the teenagers. So it was a performance uh, that I did at uh, yeah, the, Fr the Friche Label de Mai. And it was, this is like installation view of the video that followed the performance. It's at uh, Crèvecoeur for the exhibition Interior Prix. Uh, so this is some still of the of the performance. I will just introduce it uh, quickly. So the thing is that they were so this these are two teenagers that I uh, encounter, encountered in the street, and uh, yeah, I only work with teenagers that are not like from theater uh, artistic dom domain. They are not actors. They are just themselves. So I met those two teenagers in uh, the street and. And I talked uh, about them, about the performance I wanted to make. And okay, so the blue one, the blue Goku one, the story is that, uh, so he's uh, 16, 15. 
and uh, he got uh, 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 his heart break by a girl. And so now he's like uh, a total piece of shit, he's sad, he's crying every time. And we're gonna follow him throughout uh, his reconstruction. So he will pass by a different phases. So for the phases, I, I, it's, it's uh, the same as grieving. So it's like uh, you're like heartbreak, you don't you don't believe in it, and then you become and then you become like angry, and then you become really sad, and then you be so it's we follow all his reconstruction. So it's like um, uh, sentiment sentimental uh, rehabilitation, if you will. So there is like all the phases, and uh, the 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 yellow one is like the teacher that is uh, going to 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 follow him during this reconstruction, who is going to help him during this reconstruction. So he's gonna you have to regain uh, confidence in love, in girls, and mostly in himself uh, after being so broken. And yeah, so this was like the first the first. Um, the first part of this, this project. Oh. This is like uh, still from the video that we did after the, the performance. So as you can see, there's um, again, this uh, videos from uh, social media and also, also uh, um, 3D animation because my work, there's a lot of 3D animation in my work. Uh, I always bring like different type of, of uh, images, so like raw one, and then also yeah, through the animation, uh, synthetic images, uh, videos from from uh, Snapchat, phone videos, a lot of different things. But I'm go I'm just going to show you one video during this uh, this visit. But all the video are in are in Vimeo, so if you are interested in one, we can send you the all the links that you want. Sarah, I think maybe to, because you said that, of course, but, but maybe to make sure that it was like very clearly um, explained, yeah. uh, the, the Hallel Academy, um, maybe say again that it's like a project that is like a year-long research project yeah. that takes different kind of formats. So like we just saw a first yeah. performance that we did um, with Triangle and uh, a Festival Parallel, which is a, a, a performance festival in La Friche. But then the, the, you keep following and questioning those characters and their, the construction of their masculinity through the different projects that you're going to show. Yeah, the thing is that, uh, so as I said, I, the, the main subject was love, but teenage, teenage love is like a really famous subject. My, my focus was like, what is love uh, to uh, a young teenager man from working class and what is love to him? And so uh, there is different type of love. So the love between like one guy and a girl, the huge love between this guy and his mother, for example, and also the love between like guys together. I'm talking about friendships, bromance. And so this uh, huge project, there's like four, uh, four projects. So there's like performances, installation, videos, uh, music. So it's like different form, but also different process of working. The thing is that um, for each project, there's new teenager that I work with for a long period of time. Uh, and I still am in contact with each one of them because it's like a, a huge processus and also it's not like uh, I'm coming, uh, talk, talk to me about your feelings, oh, okay, bye, the, the project is done. No, it's like for me, it's like more than just making a project. It's like really creating like confidence and so they can trust me and talk to me and be like really like vulnerable. Um, the thing is that every teenager is different and of course, and so for me, it's, it was like, okay, I'm gonna use different type of process. So each one of them can tell his own story, can be as vulnerable as he wants to, can like, everyone has his own story, his own feeling, uh, isn't like, they are all different. And so I created different type of process. So for example, for this performance, it was, okay, uh, I'm gonna write the performance. 
like I'm like I am a teenage boy that got broken. So I did a lot of research on the uh, uh, internet uh, on how uh, guys are recovering, on uh, what are typical fr um, sentences that they say, uh, what are poems that they write talking about this. There's like a huge, 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 huge archive on internet of um, citation that they that they write or that they share images, uh, a lot of things. So. I wrote this, this performance, so it's like a, a monologue. And then I came to this teenager that I met in the student and I was like, okay, so here's what I write. Maybe I'm just like completely wrong on everything. So I just want you to tell me uh, if it, what, what do you think about it? Like, is it something you, you, you feel? Is it something you, can, you, you would have said? Is it something like, and he was like, yeah. This is like, I can say this, and this is how I feel. This is what I think. And I think that me writing this allows him to talk about what he's feeling. It was like uh, to like uh, facilitate uh, how we talk about love, you know? And then for the project that I'm going to show you, it was a completely different thing uh, because everything is like, uh, nothing is scripted. Everything is like 100% live, 100% live. Uh, we 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 shoot the film for two, three days with all the cameras on every time, and it's just like the editing that created the film. But everything was shot uh, all time, and the thing was like, okay, they're gonna give me whatever they want to. If they if they don't want to to tell me anything, I have to work with this. I, I'm not gonna lie push them to, to, to say what they think, what they feel, because it's really compli compli complicated for them to, to talk about feelings, because there's like this uh, expression that I like called uh, affective desert. And it's, um, it's really typical to those type of, uh, of, of boys, those, those guys that live like in a social, housing society uh, project like uh, in really poor neighborhoods in really they are always um, first of all there's like this used cliche on them which uh, is that they are violent say um, sauvage uh, really like like all of them are delinquent all of all the bad thing you can think of this is something that you, you they put on them in France I'm talking uh, about France and on top of this <laughs> on top of all those like stereotypes that they are being like um, see has because of the French society, French media and everything. <laughs> they, they think like, we don't let them express themselves. We don't let them being vulnerable, fragile, sensitive. This is like all those type of uh, emotions and feelings that are linked to vulnerability we don't allow them to, to, to show, to say, to be. And so when I came to do project for, with them, of course they are not gonna talk like this. That's why this is a real process because also I, my place as an artist is to, to, to be like um, 100 transparent and 100 like, I don't want to put words on their mouth. I don't want to, to like everything is authentic, you know. I don't know if I can explain it right, but never also, mind. Through these different projects, we're following different um, fictional and also real characters who are growing up towards reaching that moment of um, the um, asking the girl um, to marry them, right? Yeah. yeah. This is like uh, so. This, the the big story is like so. As I said, different teenagers. But in the story, it's like one. So, no, Halal Academy is a school uh, that welcomes uh, young teenagers from like 15, 16 that got uh, their, uh, their head broke. And so, we are like, this is a fictive story. In this school, we are like helping them to, as I said, regain trust uh, in girls. Uh, in love and in this in themselves, and so they came. They are heartbroken, heartbroken, and then we reconstruct them. And then they have to do all these things to 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 grow up as a man. And then they're gonna meet a girl after they gain all the 
confidence they're gonna meet a girl they're gonna go out with her and then they're gonna marry, marry her and so it's like a 15 20 age uh, i don't know how to say but it's like a, like this is the the, the 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 more important part of the life because this is like the transition between a teenage girl, a teenager and a man so yeah and so you're also like uh, uh I think Adeline, 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 your microphone is 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 um, a stop. Sorry. Yeah, we always um, we have some uh, reactions from the chat, and some of our guests want to see a video extract. So okay. I don't know if you wanted to see it, to show it right now or later on. Um, I can show the, the trailer of the of the film that I did for Manifesta. Yes. Yeah. So Carnelito. Huh? Carnelito full option. Yes. Option. Yeah, Carmelito, full option. Okay. Let's go. They are English subtitles. So let's go. And maybe when, while you're you're looking for what you 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 you're looking for, I can say that the 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 shape you're seeing is the stadium in Marseille. Um, and uh, as you might know, Marseille is a is a city that um, most of the people come from elsewhere. Uh, it's a city that has like a lot of different communities. Um, and uh, people liked, as far as stereotype, huh, Sarah, people always say that, and maybe it's a bit true, that like in the stadium, because of soccer, that's where the uh, differences are not like um, uh, separating people anymore. And people say like, in Marseille, you, you, you become Marseille when you go to the stadium, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's right. That's right. But uh, yeah, I use it for for another um, reason actually. So okay, I'm gonna show you. There is some stills and some um, screen for my mood board for the project. So I'm gonna explain it. So yeah, the the Velodrome Stadium is like a symbol of Marseille, obviously. And as I said, when I came to Marseille, I really wanted to work on Marseille. Uh, and everything that it's related to it. So I wanted to work with like symbols of the city. I wanted to, to work with people living in Marseille. I wanted to work with like, um, yeah, to, to really like create stories um, based on and related to the city I'm living right now. And so the, the Veldrum Stadium is like uh, really well known. And there's a stadium where there is obviously a uh, match, so soccer, soccer rugby, football and rugby, but also um, music shows, so concert. And the thing is that I wanted to imagine uh, another function of the stadium. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do like a game. It was really inspired by uh, Hunger Games. So I'm gonna imagine a game and where it's happening is in this stadium. So it will be like, the story is that maybe it can be like a game that will be like um, repetitive, like uh, maybe every two years the game will happen again in the stadium. So to, to like, yeah, to, to add a new story to this huge, huge symbol of Marseille. And so you can see like on the mood board, so can I need to follow? I'm gonna explain what it is. It's a, it's a TV show. So that uh, take the, the form of um, a game show. 
So the story is that five teenage boys are sent in this arena, which is the stat uh, Velodrome Stadium, and they're gonna have to, to, to fight and to battle during trials um, to find the perfect man, the perfect guy. So there's five trials, and each trial is based on how um, teenage girls described the perfect ideal um, boyfriend. So it's obviously talking about everything that you, you, that we put on this guy. You gotta be uh, like handsome, obviously. You gotta be like uh, romantic, intelligent, fun, funny. You gotta have money. You have to pay for my, my dinner. You have to pay. And this is really based on how girls describe uh, the perfect boyfriend on social media. So it's not like some 100% real, it's just like, uh, but um, yeah, anyways. So they, got, they have to fight during the trial until there is one left, which is like the Canalito full option, which is like the name for the ideal man, the one that did everything, the perfect man. And so this is like the inspiration. So I don't know if you know the, this movie, Battle Royale. So this is Battle Royale, obviously, uh, and Hunger Games. And so this is the, 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 the stadium we shoot uh, after the quarantine. So quarantine, so it was like the empty stadium. And they were all this like um, TIFO, so like the, what you can see here left from like the previous matches. So I was really happy for, with this because uh, in Maroc there is like this um, sci-fi futuristic, sometimes uh, dystopic uh, feels and sensation. So with this empty stadium, with all this like uh, remains for the past life of the, of the stadium, I was really happy. It was like the, the greatest like um, decor we, I could wish for. And so these are the, the teenagers. And so those teenagers, they are five. They are aged, uh, as they said in the trailer, 15, uh, 17. Now one of them is 18. And so they are a group of guys that are in a, what we, it's called Centre Educatif Fermé. So Centre Educatif Fermé is like an alternative uh, for detention. So, hmm. I'm gonna explain it right, I hope so. These are boys that, are, that got uh, sent to, to, to jail and then sent to the center. So they, they spent six months in the this, in this center. The thing is that they are being like, um, how do you say, jugé? Judged. Judged for things that, I, uh, that they done, uh, that they did. And, and then they, they, they put them in the center for six, six months it's all about like reinsertion, they have classes, they have all activities, and it's, it's like they are teenagers, like they are teenagers. So it's, it's like, okay, we're gonna help you uh, for the, the, when you're going to be released to like have your, your life back and everything back all together. Yeah, it's a youth detention center. Yeah, but it's not like, a, it's not jail. Yeah, but in, well, it's, you know, it's for, for use, so the, the minors go to no, the centers. It's not a juvenile uh, detention. It's not, mm. it's not a jail. It's really like a center. It's not, uh, it's not a jail. Uh, yeah, it's, they can, they have like, they can uh, go during the weekend and everything. It's really not like juvenile detention. It's, it's, it's a center. And uh, I think it's something really specific to, to friends. So it's very really difficult to explain what it actually is but so yeah so they are teenagers with a lot of stig stigmas <laughs> obviously and um, i wanted to i wanted to work with them because uh, this type of structure is really interesting in uh, how uh, it works so they are teenagers from like the area so not from marseille but from city next to marseille Actually, there's one from the north. I don't know what, what, what he, why he was sent in Marseille, but anyways, one is from Toulon, Miramas. So this, this is city from uh, near Marseille. And they are, they are all uh, bring there for six months. 
And so there's always like uh, people coming, people going, people coming, people going, people coming. And so there's the thing where each one of them has his own room. But so at night they're alone, but the re during the rest of the day, they are always all together. And this, there is something um, created in them between like the isolation and the solitude and having to be in a group. So having to create connections, having to, to talk with them because it's six months. So you can talk to no one during six months. So yeah, it really created something in them. And also there is this thing where, from my point of view, they are really being like infantilized in the center. So it's like food, we get it, we, you have to eat. Wake up, you gotta wake up. Da, 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 da. You know, it's like tch, 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 tch. so they are really being reput to like the this the the, the 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 stage of like being teenager. But if they are here, it's because they did something that a teenager is not supposed to to do. You know, so this is like the 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 the. Sometimes I was like, how do, do you feel like a teenager or like a man? And everyone was like, I feel like a man. So it was really interesting how for themselves they were men because of the history because of the past, because of the lives. And then in the center, it's like, you have to eat it, you know? It's something interesting that they are and that they live during the six months. So that's why I wanted to work with them. And so these are stills from the, from the film. And so, as I said, there is like a lot of trial. This is like a, a mood board um, screen. So, they, they think during the, the film that it begins with like all the body, like it's uh, the first trial is like uh, a, sp a training trial. So it's like all body close up on the on body parts and they don't talk a lot. It's just like breathing. And so it's, it's a bit like animalistic. And I wanted to reproduce how they are viewed, being viewed by public, like animals. And so this is the beginning of the film. It's like a training trial body, breathing, and that's it. So it, there's like no identity, no nothing. And then the second trial is like the, the, the more intimate one. So this is like the... One, one already shows like the, you already kind of getting us there as viewers because one says, oh my God, I'm gonna have an asthma attack. So they're already fragile, you start showing that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, during the editing, there's like, uh, I think there's only like three uh, sentences. So the w first one is beast, that one one guy said to the other beast, like, wow, you, you're you beast. And then the second one is like, I'm gonna have a asthma attack. So yeah, the fragility. Mm. And then also, I really keep one, this is like the first one, I think it's like, um, same as in jail. It's how we do um, pumps, you know, with like his, his feet crossed. And one of them say, oh, you, you do it like, like in jail. And this is like the first thing that, one of the first things, so I, wanted, I want people to say, okay, what is he talking about jail? Because you, you don't know. At any time, you don't know uh, where they came from. I'm telling you because this is the, the, the story, how it, it was shot, but at, at no moment in the introduction or anything, I said, they are teenager from a, a juvenile, juvenile center. So for the... Can we go through the other trials, Sarah? Yeah. Because time is running and we still have five minutes. Oh yeah, oh. And, uh, yeah. So, just... so this is like uh, the poem writing trial. So this is like the more intimate one. And so I gave them word and they have to, to write a poem with, with this. So this is like really intimate because we can see what they are, they are writing on the phones with GoPro. So it's like really like another point of view. And also, this is like the confessional part. So during this trial, there's like uh, the confessional part, same as TV reality show. So I just put like a camera, I was there and then I was like, okay, tell me what, whatever you want me to, 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 to tell. And so they start talking about love and they start talking about, okay, I'm with my girlfriend, this one year. I really like, I, I want to marry her. And one is like, I don't know what love is. And one is like, I was with a girl and I messed up and now I, I felt really lonely. And so, you know, they are all uh, telling their story and their relationship with, with love, which is uh, like, uh, we, we are from like the, 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 the training spot and then the writing poem is like really clash because you really go in, in them, really go in deep in depth, you really go in the, in the, 
sensibility, you know. And then <laughs> the French tacos. So as I said, I really work with like symbol from France and from this culture. And this tacos may, it's like a French tacos. So it's typical from France. And I wanted to, it's something that all, all French people and mostly all French people eat. And this is like a, a trio with French tacos. And then same, the haircut is something really important in, the, in these uh, teenagers. So the two finalists have the chance to be, to have like a, an haircut. So this is the haircut sequences. And this guy is from a, a really famous uh, barber shop from uh, Marseille. Mm -hmm. Again, so that's, a that's the final. That's the final trial. Isn't that's the final it? trial. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sarah. So we are coming oh, to so the end. Of so. <laughs> so, so I don't know if there are more um, questions, but it's very interesting to go into your work to uh, discover the focus on teenagers, uh, your aesthetic of um, social media, the collaborative work that is really important, uh, also the poetic uh, side also of your work, um, uh, the science fiction uh, um, appearance, the 3D animations. There is also another part in your work uh, that is important, it's a performance. Maybe you can say a few words about your performances uh, in general. The performance I, I make is like, so as I said, with uh, teenage uh, boys. So again, they are boys that I just met in the street or that I, I really want to work with them because they are in a social center or they live in my neighborhood or something like this. The performance is, uh, everything is really different. So like, for example, the next one is like a, a wedding that I'm going to create. So it, it's gonna be like a rep reconstruction, a reproduction of a, a wedding. And so they will be like, in, in all the performances, all these monologues, all like, uh, so it's like inner voices. So it's everything that the performer, so the teenager think, but never, never tell. And during the performance, they, they are like tol talking to the, themselves out loud. So it's really like, saying out loud what there is on their mind. This is like the, what I want to do with my performance. Okay, and what are your upcoming projects for uh, next year? So I have like uh, in Feb February, there is like the third part of this project in Triangle Asteroid, uh, which is like a video game where we followed uh, this guy uh, who is going to ask the end of uh, his girlfriend. And then also I will be like th this project and at uh, Cac Brittany in uh, April. And uh, this is where the wedding performance will, will take place. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's gonna be a solo show and based on all this, this huge, this huge uh, project. And also I, I'm going to be part of uh, Hotel Sarah, which take place in uh, Magasin Généraux in Pantin, uh, near mm -hmm. Paris, uh, in June. And right. Yeah, great, great projects you're having so soon. So thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for this uh, great presentation. Thank you, Céline. Thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, so, um, yeah, so this is the end of this talk. Um, and um, so I'm happy yeah, to invite you to the next one that will take place at 2.30 uh, with uh, Nicolas Flock uh, in conversation with Pascal Neveu. Uh, so from the um, director of Track Paca. Uh, so see you later then, yeah? Bye. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.